Welcome to this week's Quick Charge. Every citizen of the kingdom has a unique life message or a prophetic mantle, that which God is showing through their life. The Old Testament mantles that the prophets wore were rough and bulky and hairy. They were quite obvious, but they were also powerful. Elijah used his mantle to part the waters of the Jordan. The enemies of God will always be against the message, our mantle, which leads us to one great mystery, the mocking. Since whatever we are known for in the spirit is always under assault, the scheme is to mock and sully and refute, cast doubt on the message, make it look false, the opposite of what's true. The mantle is subject to being mocked because of the darkness. Noah was mocked, Joseph was mocked, Naomi, Hannah, Elisha, Nehemiah, David, and Jeremiah, just to name a few. On the cross, Jesus was mocked because he didn't look like a savior, a rescuer, one with power and authority, a victor, a king of kings and a lord of lords. In fact, he looked the opposite and there was nothing that he could do to prove or show otherwise. So mocking makes it seem like the opposite is true. Smith Wigglesworth, who had a great mantle of healing on his life, yet in his own body, he was under constant assault. He struggled with ailments and conditions and dysfunctions that consistently mocked the message that he lived out and demonstrated. So what's happening in us at the moment, in our family, marriage, finances, with our life, for a season, it can mock our life message. That mantle will be challenged again and again, but we must love God all the way through that mystery. The children of Israel discovered that it is easier to love God for what he does than for who he is. Their greatest celebration of God came after he performed the Red Sea miracle, not before. When I love God for who he is, he doesn't need to do anything for me, for me to abide in him. So the real test is, where is my love for him when a promise or an expectation remains unfulfilled and unanswered. Stephen, who was the first martyr of the church, was not expecting to die. All of the apostles and leaders that he had known were released after they were arrested. They escaped by the hand of the Lord, by angels or by prayer. That seemed to be the new order. It seemed that Jesus was the final martyr and it shook the church to its core. In Acts 8, 2, the Bible says godly men buried Stephen and they mourned deeply for him. The godly were in shock, deeply disappointed because it wasn't supposed to happen. In Hebrews chapter 11, the Bible says these all died in faith, not having received the promises, but they obtained a good testimony because they loved and they trusted God to the end. The three men in Daniel chapter 3 said this to King Nebuchadnezzar, if you throw us into the blazing furnace, then the God we serve is able to rescue us from the furnace of blazing fire and release us from your power. But even if he does not, O king, you can be sure that we still will not serve your gods. We tend to forget that they said that. They honored the sovereignty of God as much as his ability. They loved him through the mystery. They refused to lay down the message. Hannah was mocked terribly as she waited a long time for her petition to be fulfilled. Our God is sovereign. His sovereignty always remains and reigns. That's our challenge. We're called to love him despite the distracting mocking in all of the mysteries the riddles, the secrets, the paradoxes, the contradictions, and the speculations. Will you love him when you don't see it happening at the moment? We're called to simply love him. Join me next week for another quick charge. God bless.